Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. Clinically, I treat a lot of people with uh, musculoskeletal issues, so problems with their muscles, joints, and bones. Oftentimes pain is associated with that, and so we have to diagnose them and, and come up with a treatment plan. And um, the diagnosis is oftentimes arthritis, and there's two sort of main types of arthritis that you probably are familiar with, and that's osteoarthritis, which is kind of your typical when we say, oh, you know, I've got arthritis. Typically, it's the osteoarthritis that we're talking about. The other main one is uh, called rheumatoid arthritis, and that's more of an autoimmune condition, uh, which we'll talk more about in the future. But today, we're going to focus mostly on osteoarthritis and the pretty dramatic increase in incidence of osteoarthritis over the past uh, several decades. In fact, it has doubled since um, the mid uh, 20th century, so like the mid 1900s. Um, it has uh, doubled. And so um, researchers wanted to investigate that and see if they can come up with um, an underlying reason of why that might be. So what they did, uh, first of all, the study was published in uh, a medical journal called PNAS, uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And uh, this was just a couple months ago this year. And what they did is they looked at three different subject groups. Um, one group was uh, they used prehistoric bones. And so they looked basically at our hunter-gatherer uh, ancestors and they evaluated the integrity of their um, knee joint. And so um, they wanted to look at that group. Then they looked at what they called the pre-industrial group, which went about from the um, late 1800s to uh, the early 1900s, about 1940, and then they looked at the post-industrial group, which, which was about from the 1970s to today. They actually ended the study looking at bones from uh, about 2015. So, so they had those three different subject groups, and what they found out is that uh, this is where they come up, came up with the statistic that osteoarthritis has doubled since the, um, since the pre-industrial group. And so there were some hypotheses about why that is, and one of them was um, age. So as we're living longer, maybe just because we're living longer, the rate of osteoarthritis has gone up. And the other one is obesity, because we know that, um, that we have become a lot more obese as the decades have gone on. And so they figured that obesity was one of the underlying causes. And um, as they looked and dove into the statistics and they teased out things like age and BMI, body mass index, which goes with obesity, they found that those didn't completely uh, explain the results of the increase when you took out those uh, statistical factors. And so um, then they wanted to figure out why that may be. So they came up with a few different interesting um, uh, theories. and. Further research is ongoing to really prove these theories, but uh, other studies kind of help to back these up. And there's two main things that I just want to bring to your attention. One of them that has been a, a pretty dramatic decrease over time, certainly since the hunter-gatherer days, but even since kind of the pre-industrial age, is inactivity. Inactivity leads to osteoarthritis. And the reason why that is a couple of key reasons. One is that the cartilage that is between the bones that make up the knee is very much dependent upon supply and demand, like so many other things in the body. That if there's not a sufficient amount of demand on that cartilage, then the cartilage is gonna thin out and it's become weaker and more fragile. And when there's a greater demand that's put on the knee joint, then uh, there's more structural integrity and there's a decreased chance of developing arthritis in the knee. So inactivity is a big one. Um, um, another, oh, the other part of inactivity is just the strength of the muscles because muscles, even more so than cartilage, works very much by supply and demand. The more demand that you put on the muscles surrounding the knee, and again, we could be talking about any joint, but this particular study um, just looked at knee uh, osteoarthritis, um, that when you put a greater demand from physical activity on the knee, then the muscles around it will hypertrophy and grow and strengthen, and that will help to support the knee and also decrease the chance of developing osteoarthritis. That was uh, 
one big one, so inactivity. The other one was general systemic inflammation. And this type of inflammation is much more common in our culture today, certainly compared to the prehistoric, you know, hunter-gatherer bones that they looked at, but even more so than the pre-industrial age. We are exposed to much more chemicals, other environmental factors that are inflammatory, and there's a greater increase of a particular type of uh, fat in our body called visceral adipose tissue, belly fat. And belly fat, uh, we've even talked in past episodes about belly fat, but this is not just fat, it's not just like a cosmetic thing, you know, your belly sticking out, but it's a very um, inflammatory, almost separate organ system. And this belly fat produces a lot of inflammatory chemicals. And so the thoughts are that this increase in belly fat increases um, inflammation. And this inflammation, if you have a little wear and tear already on the, the knee joint, or any other joint for that matter, if there's an old injury or there's already an underlying, you know, maybe just minor issue, the inflammation that might be produced by this visceral adipose tissue is going to really magnify those joints and expedite the degeneration of the joint. And if there's already inactivity, you already have a thin uh, layer of cartilage, if the muscles are already weakened, then that's kind of a perfect storm for developing uh, osteoarthritis of the knee. So those are a few key things that uh, came out of this study is that inactivity and inflammation, systemic inflammation from things like visceral adipose tissue could really expedite the rate of, uh, of osteoarthritis. We know that it's doubled in that amount of time from about the mid 1900s. So this is a really debilitating condition. A lot of people just can't function normally because the knees are so inflamed and sore and and uh, then it just becomes a vicious cycle. Because their knees are inflamed and they have osteoarthritis, it's difficult to have physical activity. So um, it could still be reversed in many cases, especially in the um, beginning stages, but certainly prevention is uh, what we really wanna aim for. So let's not uh, add to those statistics. And I, because you know, think about what people oftentimes do. They wake up in the morning, they sit down, they eat their meal, or maybe they're just out the door, they get in the car, they commute for an hour plus to work, they sit eight to 10 hours at work, drive home, sit on the couch, watch TV, no activity at all. So we have to stand more, maybe eat your meal in the morning standing, uh, stand more at work. There's so many great um, kind of uh, contraptions that you could put on your desk to, to make it a standing desk and uh, do more walking during the day, walking during lunch set up just regular breaks when you're sitting, maybe at your computer, set, stand up, do some air squats, just stand, walk around, spend more time on your feet. And those extra forces will really help to uh, start to strengthen that cartilage in the knee and also, also the muscles around the knee. And then, like we've talked about so many times in the past, we wanna really try to decrease the amount of fat, especially in our abdomen. So there's lots of strategies for that, but those are just kind of the basic concepts. So. I hope those made sense and uh, let's really start to work on those so we can decrease these statistics and uh, until then, keep it real.